According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the American Academy of Periodontology, almost half of American adults have some form of periodontitis. A new evidence-based classification system for periodontal diseases was introduced in 2018, following a consensus conference of global leaders in periodontology. This new disease classification framework introduces a multidimensional staging and grading system for periodontitis similar to what is used in medicine. This system considers severity, treatment complexity, tooth loss due to periodontitis, rate of disease progression, and risk factors. It also highlights the individualized and complex nature of the disease in each patient and his or her expected response to treatment. There are three steps to staging and grading a patient. Step one, assess the level of disease. The clinical examination still utilizes full mouth probing depths and clinical attachment loss, full mouth radiographs, and missing teeth due to periodontitis. Although clinical attachment loss is the most relevant clinical parameter in measuring the severity of periodontitis, radiographic evidence of bone loss in combination with probing depths may be used if clinical attachment loss is unavailable. Step two, establish the stage. The stage is assigned based on the severity and complexity of the disease at the most affected site. A single stage is assigned to a patient. Stages one and two signify mild to moderate periodontitis in patients who have not lost any teeth due to the disease, whereas stages three and four indicate severe periodontitis. The initial question is, is it either stage one or two or is it stage three or four? An assessment of the patient's periodontal chart and radiograph should be used to distinguish between these two groups. Stage one is incipient periodontitis with bone loss within the coronal 15% of the root and probing depths equal to or less than four millimeters. Stage two represents progression beyond incipient periodontitis and exhibits bone loss within 15 to 33% of the root and probing depths equal to or less than five millimeters. If teeth were lost or planned to be removed due to periodontitis, or if deep vertical bony defects or deep furcation involvements are present, the patient has either stage three or four periodontitis. The distinction between stage three and four is determined either by the extent of tooth loss due to periodontitis or by assessing the complexity of the periodontal and overall treatment required. In stage four cases, the greater extent of tooth loss requires extensive rehabilitation. Step three, establish the grade. Grading indicates the rate of periodontitis progression, the anticipated responsiveness to standard therapy, and potential impact on systemic health. A patient's grade can change in either direction over time. Grade A signifies a slow rate of progression. Grade B signifies a moderate rate, and grade C signifies a rapid rate. You should assume a grade B for patients unless their clinical history or risk profile indicates either a grade A or a grade C rate of progression. A practical approach to assign the grade is to use the ratio of percent of bone loss to patient's age at the most affected site. If the patient's ratio is greater than one, then grade C is assigned. In contrast, if the ratio is less than 0.25, then grade A is assigned. In addition, you should assess grade modifiers such as smoking habits and glycemic control. Disease progression and severity can be influenced by a patient's response to dental biofilm. Moreover, some cases require more intensive control of the dental biofilm and inflammation than others. Ultimately, remember that staging and grading a patient is not always the result of precise calculations and should not be solely based on a single variable. Always use your clinical judgment and make a holistic assessment to determine the most reasonably accurate classification for your patient. This allows you to utilize a personalized approach to patient care and develop a comprehensive treatment strategy based on the patient's specific needs.